hurts. I can't do it. Oh. You may have seen online something called the open bottle or beer bottle challenge, where people take a glass bottle and a knife, give it a couple of taps and woo, the top comes straight off it. But this isn't just a party trick. There's actual physics behind how and why a glass breaks under pressure. <laughs> so I'm going to do a few tests and see if I can crack the science, pun intended, and give you a few handy hints for opening up a bottle yourself. Hey! Let's get cracking. Let's see if I can do this in one go. It's actually really tricky. What you're doing now is more just a slide. It still needs to strike it. I'll, I'll try it without sliding. I did it! So how does it work? Well, there's a theory that says that when you strike the bottle, you're hitting it at the seam, which is the weakest point, and that's why it breaks. But that is not true, because glass bottles are blown from one single piece of glass. There are no seams. And any line that you see on the bottle is actually just from the mould. It's all got to do with the structural integrity of the bottle. So what happens is, when you hit the bottle, you create a point of really high force just under the lip. And you also chip the bottle just a tiny bit. So this creates stress, which is then relieved by a fracture line at 90 degrees to that point of force. I'm gonna see what happens when I do one with an empty bottle. And I want to see if the liquid affects how this works at all. Let's go. <laughs> so it doesn't have anything to do with whether there's liquid in the bottle, whether that's carbonated or not, and whether you tap the bottle. It's all got to do with that point of force and the fracture line created to relieve it. So now that we know how to take the top off a bottle, let's see about taking off the bottom. Like this. Yeah! You might have seen this one before, smashing the bottom off a bottle. The videos I've seen online make it look like magic, but it is definitely science, so I'm gonna figure out how it works. So to start, plain water in a glass bottle with my hand. <laughs> no, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. It hurts too much. Okay, now I'm gonna use the mallet. <laughs> so what's actually happening here? Well, because of inertia, the fluid inside the bottle doesn't move down at the same rate. They're slightly out of sync. So when the rebounding liquid finally does catch up, it has enough concentrated force to rupture the bottom of the bottle. There's also research suggesting that it has to do with pressure inside the bottle. That low pressure turns a little bit of the liquid into a gas. It vaporizes it. So when the liquid on top comes back down and the pressure returns to normal, that gas turns into lots and lots and lots of tiny little bubbles, which then explode and emit a lot of force onto the glass here, which blows the bottom of the bottle out. I've got a bunch of different bottles and liquids to try it with. So I have Posada. I'm gonna do this big vacuum sealed one. It's heavy. Okay. That made an ungodly sound, but I don't think it broke. Oh. That just shattered. Let's do another one. I'm gonna do square bottom. also just completely shattered, which is confusing me because it goes against what I know about how this works. I actually reckon the Posada is what's stopping this from happening. So I'm gonna take this bottle, which is the same as the one I just broke, empty it out, put some water in it, and see what happens then. So we are back with water. Let's get my grip right and see if we can crack this open. The bottom, the bottom only. I mean, look, some of the side still did blow off, but that is much more what we expected 
than the Posada was. <laughs> So why didn't this work? Well, the effect seems to clearly be different for square bottles, which means that it's not just about the contents of the bottle, but the structural integrity of the glass. Now I'm gonna do it with a carbonated bottle that I am gonna open, because I know what happens, and it's pretty cool. I wanna show you. <laughs> this is gonna be so messy. Hey! Why does it not work with carbonated liquids? Well, when you do that same motion, the bottle pulls down and carbon dioxide fills that space and forms bubbles which float out of the top of the bottle and create that beautiful fountain of fizzy drink that we see. But none of these methods are gonna safely get me a drink if I don't have a bottle opener. So in the interest of science, I've gathered a bunch of hacks and I'm gonna see if they work. All these methods use pretty much the same theory. I have a lever, which is the spoon, that sits on a fulcrum, my knuckle, that amplifies the amount of effort that I put in to pop the cap off. Yeah! Well, I'm told you can open a bottle with the bottle. Ah! Oh, almost, almost. Ah! What an easy way to open your drink and partially open your friend's drink. Well, you need to catch the lids on each other and it's really hard because they are quite skinny, but you can catch these little sticky outy bits together and kind of leverage it against your knuckle. And for my next trick, and this is the coolest one, I'm gonna take two bottles, put the lid of this one under the lip of this one, and then I'm gonna kick the bottom of this bottle and the lid of this one is gonna come flying off. Okay. That is really, really cool. If you've got some things that you're curious about, please send them in to me. I love learning new skills. Ow! Ow! Ah! And if you want to see more videos like this, then hit that button below and subscribe to us on ABC Science.